The platypus has been seen as a freak and a fraud. But now the animal reveals rich new pathways in our evolution. Nature reports the detailed results of an analysis of the genome of Glenny, a single female Australian duckbill platypus. We're not very far from Canberra, just a few kilometres up the road, uh, and this lake is perfect platypus habitat. Uh, they live in burrows deep in the earth banks around here, and they just come out in the early morning and the evening to feed. The platypus is beautifully adapted for its aquatic habitat. It's a lovely little creature. You can see that it is truly a mammal. It has fur and it feeds its, its young on milk. But it has a lot of reptilian characteristics. For instance, its eye structure is very much like a reptile. Uh, and particularly its reproductive organs are like reptiles, so much so that it actually lays eggs. The platypus is by itself, basically, in its genus and species. There are no other things like the platypus, that's for sure. It has one relative called the echidna in Australia, which is also what we call a monotreme, which means that it only has one opening on the rear end, shall we say, for everything to exit and enter. Um, it has features of mammals, but it also has some features of other animals. The Nature paper that we just published shows the genome sequence and analysis of the platypus. People from America and the UK and Australia were able to obtain a sequence of platypus. They were able to break up its cells, look at its genetic code, and then report that out as, of course, a string of letters as we do with genome sequences. We were looking at the whole set of uh, platypus protein coding genes and comparing them to other genes in other species, from chicken to human to mouse and, and the marsupial. And we were looking for differences and similarities between the genes. We were looking to see what the platypus has that we don't have and what we have that the platypus hasn't. In Oxford, curator of zoological collections Tom Kemp compares notes with geneticist Chris Ponting. So of course, it's much used by creationists because it's, um, you know, nothing, you couldn't possibly evolve a thing with a bird's beak and mammal's um, fur and a, and, and a reptilian egg. But uh, we, know, we know better than that. It's got quite, it's got something of a fossil history. It, it is an extraordinary animal, isn't it? It's this strange amalgam of, of uh, different features which are actually present in the genome too. It has all of these different genes from uh, birds and, and reptiles as well as the other, other mammals. It is an extraordinary creature. I was in my lectures, I always call it the mystery of the monotremes. Mm, mm. And I could tell you at least six different theories over the last hundred years or so of what they are. Mm. We still don't agree. Over 250 million years ago, the Earth had a single landmass, Pangaea. Over time, Pangaea split into two smaller land masses. The ancestors of the platypus arose on one of these, the supercontinent Gondwana. Gondwana then split into a number of smaller continents, including South America and Australia. The South American monotremes died out. So the modern-day platypus is now only found on the eastern coastal region of mainland Australia and in parts of Tasmania. However bizarre and alien they may seem, the monotremes are in fact the oldest surviving branch of all mammals living today. When the first specimens came to Europe from Australia, they were thought to have been a hoax, a fraud. Indeed, there's a specimen in the Natural History Museum in London where someone has taken scissors to it to prove that in fact it was a, a fraud. Uh, this specimen was regarded with suspicion when it arrived at the museum. This was back in 1798 because it had travelled here on ships that came through what were known as the Indian Seas and the Chinese in particular were well known for fabricating animals. And they made, for example, what was known as an eastern mermaid and this was made up of part monkey and part fish. So they thought the specimen was a fabricated creature. Now, what they did at the time was try and remove the beak because they didn't believe that the animal was real. Well, not surprisingly, the genome, like the animal, is a strange amalgam of reptiles and mammals. The genome's quite small, like birds and, and reptiles, but it has pretty much the same suite of genes as humans do. There's a, about 18 and a half thousand genes, and they're very similar to, to human genes. But there are some differences. There are some genes that don't exist in mammals, but do in chickens, like egg yolk proteins, for instance. So it's been terribly interesting to explore the suite of genes. 
one of the, the major findings we immediately saw is that it has a phenomenal range of receptors called vomeronasal receptors that is the largest that we have seen among any mammals. What we think that is, is that when the platypus dives underwater foraging for food, it is able to appreciate whole different types of chemical stimuli in its environment. And the odd thing about the platypus is that it closes its eyes, it closes its nose whilst it dives, and so all of the chemicals that will be seen by these receptors will enter through the back of its mouth in such a way as has only previously been seen among creatures like the hippopotamus, another aquatic mammal. One of the extraordinary things about the platypus is that it has venomous spurs. The adult males are able to envenomate, they're able to inject venom from the ends of their spurs into unsuspecting biologists or anyone else and apparently it's excruciatingly painful. It's able to deliver a venom which can kill dogs and it can incapacitate humans for a number of weeks. It's so powerful. And the genome shows us that this venom looks like reptiles, although it has evolved completely independently from reptiles. This is a wonderfully weird and strange creature. It is not um, that the god has a, a, a fantastic sense of humor. It's just that we scientists cannot always second guess what we're going to find in nature. Well, for comparative genomics, weird is good. We call it informative variation, and we can use the differences and the similarities in sequence between a platypus and a human uh, to search for genes, and not just platypus genes, but also human genes. And we can use it to search even for the little sequences that turn these genes on and off. This genome sequence is incredibly important because it plugs a hole in our knowledge of mammalian evolution. We can use the, the comparisons to say something about the common ancestor that lived about 180 million years ago and this gives us tremendous power to explore the genome of all mammals. I think in the next 10 years there'll be an explosion of such sequences and so beyond what we've been able to see for the platypus we are able to now develop the methods to tell in the genome how species are similar to one another and how they are different.